Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hello everyone, Joe Fernandez here once again, and today I'll be going over four ways to counter Arms Warriors in the arena. Arms Warriors are powerful melee specs that if left unchecked, can easily be your demise. This guide will go over four ways to counter them, so that you can play around them well. The first one will be depending on the class you play, but it evolves around kiting an Arms Warrior. Quite a number of classes have a relatively easy time kiting an Arms Warrior, so it's important to do so in order to avoid heavy pressure from them. They have two main mobility cooldowns they can use, so playing around them can make it easier for you to kite them if you have the tools to do so. Raikou does a perfect example of this, using his blink after I charge him, making me unable to hit him. I follow up, having to use my heroic leap to reconnect, which eventually Raikou blinks away once again, denying me uptime, as well as now having no real way getting to him. Notice how Raikou is also positioned away from me. If I were to continue pushing in with Bladestorm, I would compromise my healer's position, as well as be more vulnerable myself. This forces me having to swap off targets and no longer pursue the mage. This also shows that positioning against warriors can be done well by casters or healers like this, as it can also be a good way to force the enemy warrior to swap off of you. This is because your good positioning will force the warrior to have to swap off you in order to not be in a bad position. Thessia does a good job of this here too, as I can't push in on him to stop his cast or I could be in even more trouble. Trying to bait a warrior in a rough position can almost feel like a win-win situation. If they play bad, they could push in too much, which can allow you to stun them behind the pillar, which can lead to kills or forcing big defensive cooldowns. If the warrior plays smart and doesn't overextend, then they won't die, but they won't be able to deal as much pressure as they would like to, resulting in less pressure from the warrior. Another big way of countering an arms warrior is to force them in their defensive stance. Defensive stance makes a warrior harder to kill, but it also reduces their damage by 20% in PvP, which is very huge. When a warrior has too much battle stance uptime, they can deal a ton of damage, especially in cleave situations. This can easily overwhelm teams, and if leaving the warrior alone too much in battle stance, they can easily be your demise. The best way to force them into defensive stance is either by pressuring them during their battle stance, popular for many cleaves to do so, or simply by making stun swaps onto warriors in battle stance. It's important to have the threat of damage there as well, otherwise if you don't have the pressure for it, the warrior could sit in battle stance too much and deal incredible damage. Pressuring warriors when they are in battle with a stun ready should force them into defensive stance quickly, or you could stun them in battle stance and crush them. You can also force them to deal less damage by avoiding their cleave pressure. Arm Arms Warriors have an incredible amount of multi-target damage from their passive pressure as well as cooldown abilities. These can deal great pressure when targets are stacked, allowing a warrior to gain a lot of pressure on multiple targets. The best way to deal with this is by splitting up with your partners so that the warrior can only pursue one target. That way you will have more of your team avoiding cleave pressure, making an arms warrior's pressure less effective and making it easier to deal with. This can depend on the comp you run and may not be possible to achieve all the time, but it can be important to do especially during the cooldown abilities. These cooldowns is where an arms warrior can gain huge momentum if able to get off their damage on multiple targets. If unable to avoid the cleave pressure, then the arms warrior could gain too much momentum, which later in dampening can make it unrecoverable from the enemy team. You want to try and avoid these situations so that you don't take too much damage in these burst goes, as well as spend less mana having to heal this pressure. The fourth way to counter an arms warrior is a more of a tricky situation one, which involves playing around war banner. War banner is a very powerful defensive cooldown, mainly used against compositions that evolve around crowd control chains to land kills. Against good warriors, it can be difficult to time your crowd control around war banners, sometimes even impossible. However, knowing when they have it, and when you can suspect the use of it, can make dealing with it easier, and sometimes can negate the use of it if you can kill it quickly. A good example is during a stun into trap combination from a hunter team. When timed well, it will reduce the trap duration by half. This can only be countered if they were to react and kill the war banner quick enough before the trap landed. You can also kill the war banner at this point before the fear lands in order to have your fearful duration when it comes. However here, the priest mistimed his fear on the monk, buying him enough time to land the cocoon before the fear hit. 
So killing the war banner before you chain your crowd control will be the most ideal thing you can do out of a well-timed banner. That way you negate the effect of the war banner, then you can use your crowd control for the next setup, knowing there won't be a war banner for quite some time. Another example is during a rogue mage opener if they land a sap. When an RMP lands this early on, they want to make a heavy offensive setup in order to land kills or force big defensive cooldowns early on. A well-timed war banner could mess up this opener, but the enemy rogue mage do a good job not committing their offensive setup during the war banner, and will save it for a later go when war banner won't be a factor. Another way to deal with it can be by mind gaming the war banner, basically trying to bait it out the war banner too early or too late. Simply crowd controlling before it lands can render it useless, allowing you to kill the banner or simply go through it if follow-up CC is not needed. That covers four different ways of countering an arms warrior. If this guide helped, make sure to like it and leave any questions or comments down below. I'll see you on the next guide. Thanks for watching.